plan to reduce the default speed limit in Scotland area from 30 to 20 miles per hour has gathered widespread support from environmental health and safety campaigners. A four-month public consultation on the proposed Holyrood Members Bill has attracted almost 2,000 responses. So is 20 really plenty for our residential streets? In Edinburgh now is the Green MSP behind the proposal, Mark Ruskell. And here in the studio is the motoring journalist, Alan Douglas. Thanks for joining us this evening. You were waiting for me to fall down the stairs no, there, all, and no. I didn't. No, not, not today, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can I ask you, first of all, why is this necessary, do you think, to turn it down from 30 to 20? Well, we know that um, if we can reduce traffic speed from 30 to 20, that we'll save lives, um, particularly of vulnerable road users such as children and elderly people. Um, but we also know that if we can reduce traffic speeds in our communities, we'll encourage walking and cycling, which of course is good for the environment and good for our health. So I think public opinion is starting to turn on this now. And we've seen, for example, in Fife, most residential communities there now have a 20 mile an hour speed limit. Um, we've seen the same in Clapman and Show, and of course Edinburgh has got its rollout. So I think the time for a national switch to bring some uh, national uniformity around the speed limit um, has come. You know, we've had the speed limit since uh, 1930s. It was plucked out of the air. There's no real rational basis for it. So I think it's time to actually put in place a much safer speed limit for the communities where we live, work and play. Alan, is it not a bit of a no-brainer if it's going to save lives, it's going to encourage people to cycle? You're such a fan of people to well, walk? No, well, by that argument, if you do away with cars altogether, you will reduce the number of accidents. But you've got to consider the effect that this would have on any city. Uh, the breathing heart of a city it involves people getting about, moving about, whether they're traders, whether they're tradesmen, whether they're uh, delivery people, whether they're taxis, whether they're people enjoying the facilities of the city. People have to get about, and it's all very well saying we'll just slow everything down and everything will be fine. But that's not the point. I think a lower speed limit where it's appropriate and perhaps almost as importantly when it's appropriate is a very effective um, uh, use, uh, a very effective measure for road safety. But what I, I'm not happy about is this blanket approach that if you just cover a whole city in 20 mile an hour speed limits then everything will be fine. It's all about people being more aware of road safety and the need to look after themselves, not just motorists, but pedestrians as well. If pedestrians don't step out in front of traffic, they won't get knocked down. <laughs> uh, Mark, what's your response to that? You want a kind of a blanket 20 mile an hour well, limit. Does that well, not make sense? Or just, just at certain times in certain places? Mm. Well, actually, I, I don't want a blanket limit. And I, I actually agree um, with Alan there that there will be some roads, particularly in urban communities, distributor roads that but are they'll be the to channel they'll be the kind of exception to the rule, traffic won't they? from one area to another. And that, yes, under my bill proposal, local authorities would have the ability to exempt those roads um, from a default 20 mile an hour speed limit. So I think 20 where it makes sense um, across the country uh, would be a great step forward. And I think particularly for residential communities, those streets where we don't just move around, we actually live, work and play on those streets as well, um, a much safer limit would be 20 mile an hour. What, but I would agree with the blanket approach, you know, could undermine a 20 mile an hour what speed percentage limit, and that's of, why having exemptions would make sense. What percentage of streets then would be 20? Well, that would be up for local authorities to determine, but I think typically we would look at, say, a 10 percent of streets being exempted from a default uh, 20 mile an hour speed limit and retaining the existing 30 mile an hour. You know, that, that's the pattern that we've seen in Fife. It's the pattern that we're seeing in Edinburgh at the moment. So the, ma the majority then, 90%. that addresses then, the issue about traffic flow. That addresses the issue about traffic flow. Well, yeah, but, the 90%. But, but yeah. the problem with that is you then have confusion. I mean, it's, it can, can be confusing enough at the moment with bus lanes. Some bus lanes are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some are only at certain times of certain days. It becomes confusing. And if you then have variable speed limits depending on the whim of the local councillors, then it becomes very confusing for the motorists. It's and I have to at the say, anyway. well, some uh, local authorities have a patchwork of 20 zones at the moment. So if you, if you go from Clatmanon and you drive across the King Carden Bridge to Falkirk, there aren't any 20 zones at all. So we need a bit of uniformity across the whole of Scotland we, here. We and do I think need... taking a sensible approach, reducing the speed limit in the areas where we live, work and play. But, but, but what you're uh, saying is un sense. uniformity is a, is a blanket speed limit. That, that's, no, you're you're be not talking about exceptions. Where it makes sense. Yeah. It, where there be exemptions where it makes sense. And I think we can all point to, I, I know in my community, the roads where it makes sense to keep those as 30, but I also want the, the streets where my kids 
uh, walk to school, where they play. I want those to be safe streets, and we know that by reducing uh, traffic speeds to 20 mile an hour, then we save lives, particularly of children. Um, your, the public consultation finishes on Friday, so what happens next then, Mark? <laughs> well, I think we've had a lot of very uh, constructive feedback. Um, there's been a huge res positive response from the public, from communities, from councils. But we'll look at the detail of the arguments here and we'll hopefully construct a piece of legislation that, that's going to work. You know, I'm not just waving a flag here uh, in the Scottish Parliament. I want to put in place something that is actually genuinely going to uh, work for, for the whole community. And how much support have you got within the Parliament, do you think? Um, we've had constructive discussions with other parties. Um, we'll continue with those discussions, including with the Transport Minister, and see where we can get to. But I want something that's going to work here. OK, and just in a sentence, <laughs> you wanted to know about bikes. Do, uh, well, yes. I mean, in a sentence. <coughs> yeah, does, does, does the, the it, speed limit does apply, apply to, to bikes? Current? Does it apply to bikes? Um, I gather in, in England the 20 mile an hour doesn't apply to bikes, but of course bikes are way a lot less than a car. If you get hit by a car, yeah, but it can still you've hurt. got a big problem. <laughs> it so, still uh, I couldn't go 20 we'll miles on a bike anyway, one. but there you go. <laughs> anyway, we'll have to leave it there. Mark and Alan, thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you.